What's going on guys, it's Tony here from Rollo Details and today we have a special guest over here, Mr. Rennie Doyle What's up? from PNS. Yeah. yeah, so guys, the main purpose of this video is to motivate someone out there. And as you guys can see, the title of this video is how to go from mobile detailer to a shop, you know, detailer. So, and I wanna kinda ask, you know, Mr. Rennie here, a couple questions like, how did you start your business? So, so before we do that, is that we're gonna flip this over on you, oh, and I'm actually gonna interview you. Oh. So, but I will give a little bit of a background because we we're just talking, and Tony and I've got a like uh, background where we grew up uh, pretty tough, pretty pretty poor, and I grew up 13 years old, um, taking my my bicycle around airports with a wagon behind me and uh, cleaning airplanes. And I was able to get my grandmother, who uh, helped raise me, uh, off of welfare by, uh, I get a little teary-eyed, um, by taking my bike all over the place. Okay. And we didn't have anything. We didn't have a car. Um, we, we were really, really pretty poor, you know, poor town and uh, didn't have a dad, but had awesome mom and grandma that supported me. And I didn't want my grandmother to be embarrassed. She's a proud woman and um, uh, Italian and uh, very uh, hardcore. And I just didn't want her to be on welfare. So I went to work and, and detailing stuff was the way to go. Yeah. That kind of touched me. <laughs> right. You know, because I'm in the, I was like, you know, where I grew up, I grew up in Guatemala. Mm. And I remember those I, days. I had know. it really good compared to you. <laughs> That's tough. <laughs> Guatemala at that time was, you know. Yeah. It, it, uh, so it's, I think, as you said, you know, of taking and motivating people. And so I ran, you know, I, I sold my first detailing company when I was uh, just a teenager for almost six figures. So I built it up pretty quickly, but it was, a, I, I called myself a business at that point. I got lucky. And so I really sold it to get out of detailing because I thought, okay, I've made this much money um already i'm going to be a multi-millionaire by the time i was 25 mm -hmm. and then i learned that the cute when the cuteness wears off and you're no longer a kid and you're going to build a serious business and you got bills and everything else that it was a little different story so when i launched back in you know to another you know, business it was it was a very steep learning curve and uh we'll talk about that today with you so how did you get your start well, like the detailing, let's get started, you know, all the way from, you know, when I was a kid. Um, the detailing part started, you know, because um, I remember uh, it was a Christmas, you know, mm -hmm. and um, like I saw that a lot of people was giving a lot of presents. Mm -hmm. And then I get a present as well. Mm -hmm. But the presents that I was getting, it was not a toy, it was not a car, it was not a... It was not, it was not toys. And you know, as a kid, you no want toys, toys. Right. toys. What was so, it? What were you getting? It was a t-shirt, it was a pair of shoes. Something practical. So, and those persons, they, which I do appreciate this from my, from my family, you know, mm -hmm. the, the people that are close around us in, in Guatemala, they was giving that to us because they saw the need that mm -hmm. we have, you know, because mm -hmm. my mom, she was, uh, you know, she, she worked, and everything you know to support you know five kids you know wow. so that's when i was i want to say like wow. six years or seven years and but when i was opening up you know the present i was excited because Heck i yeah. thought it was a toy inside yeah, right but when i see a t-shirt my mom was right beside me and she saw me that i started crying right you're sad i was sad and she asked me Son, why you are crying? And I said, this is not a toy. And I was wow. crying. I was crying. And um, I remember that she made the effort after she saw me crying to gather up some money mm. or whatever. And she went to buy a little Volkswagen. It was a red Volkswagen uh, that you can open up the doors. It was shiny. It was a toy. It was shiny, it was a toy. And I was so excited. Wow. Then, when I touched the car, uh, and I see the fingerprint, right? And the paint of the car. The bummy I out. I was like, mm. 
I was taking care <laughs> of the car because funny. that was kind of like my only car that right. I had, that's, you know, like it was funny. little. And I remember that I was looking around how to clean it up. Mm -hmm. And then my grandpa, he has some microfiber mm -hmm. suede, I believe it's called, mm -hmm. uh, to clean up his glasses. So I took one from him Wow. and I keep it inside of the car. And then I, there is when my OCD start to keeping everything clean. I'll be dead. Yes. Now, when I was eight years, my father, he passed away. Someone mm. killed him in Guatemala. So <laughs> you just, so you have an idea how tough it's there. Uh, someone killed him. Uh, and, you know, after that, I saw that my mom, she was kind of working in order to, you know, bring the food, you know, to survive. the family, survive, technically. Yeah. And then I was 10 wow. years when I decide, no, I have to start working. I have mm -hmm. to do something. So I was going to school after, you know, like 12, when it's, when they let us go home, you know, I was grabbing my bicycle, but that time I, someone gave me a bicycle, mm -hmm. you know, so I was super happy with the bicycle. And then I was, um, me and my brother, he find a mechanical shop mm -hmm. where they have a, it was a welding shop, it was mechanical, you know, for to mm -hmm. fix the motors mm -hmm. and stuff like that from the vehicles. And as well, it was a welding shop. So he went to ask for a job for, for me because I told him I want to work, but I don't know how to ask to the mechanic if he can give me work, you know. So they hired me, <laughs> you know, at 10 years old. And then I started making 26 quetzales a week, which mm. is the equivalent of maybe $3. Uh, wow. Yeah, that, that's the equivalent of three dollars. And I start working. I start learning a little bit of everything. And but my brother, he when my my dad passed away, my brother he kept the vehicle from my dad. And then I remember the I always kept that car super clean. And my brother said, "Hmm, you got a talent." But I didn't. But the, back in the day, I don't even know the word detailing right. or anything like right. that. And I was just, you know, like cleaning up, you know, with whatever I had, with brushes, whatever. And he always see, you know, how or saw how uh, I kept his car super clean. And then he ended up saying, OK, we have to put a business and this is going to be a car wash. So we have a car wash in Guatemala, my brother and I, and we start working. When I was uh, 14 years, I did work for four years in that car wash. And, but it was a car wash, but since we don't know what it was detailing, we was detailing a car for Absolutely. a super low price. And I was kind of take, it was taking me like two to three hours to do one car for 35 quetzales, which is around $7. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. And, but you know, we was happy. And that was the whole point. We was happy because we was kind of making a living from yeah. our little car wash, you know, and still today, the car wash is there. It's still there. It's still there. And my brother, he still managed that car wash. So, so flash forward, what brought you to the States? Okay. When I, uh, I was, uh, you know, when I was uh, 18 years old, um, I was looking at the car wash. It was making some money, but not enough for both of us because the car wash was for both of us, mm -hmm. thank you. And uh, I decided to come this way, you know. Mm -hmm. So I find out the way to find like a visa, work visa, mm -hmm. and then I, I fly this way mm -hmm. and I start doing electrical work. Oh, really? Yeah. Electrician? Electrician. Wow. So I did electrical work for, I want to say, 15 years. Wow. And um, I did learn a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. When I was, I want to say, at the top of my career career on electrical, I was an ele electrical superintendent mm -hmm. back in the days, which, well, not back in the days, it's only three years, you know. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's not too, like, you know, it's only three, three years. But um, I decided to quit because that was not what I was looking for. Wow. There's was, a there's another time with us, my uh, my whole family. All my brothers are, are electricians. Oh, really? Every single one of them. Okay, Every single okay. One. Because it was a it was a career path 
that you can learn something. And coming from what we did, and um, my father, I didn't know my father growing up, but I, I know him now. He was an electrician. Mm -hmm. uh, my uncle was an electrician, so it goes way back. Um, but you know why? I, I same thing. What was your passion? Why didn't you go? Why away from electrical? What, what took you away from that? Because while I was doing electrical work, I was always uh, detailing. I was uh, on the weekends, you know, yep. as a hobby. Uh, it was a hobby that was giving me some sort of money, you know. Um, but I started looking at, you know, the. It was a lot of details. I'm talking about like seven years ago, maybe. Mm -hmm. It was a lot of details that they was kind of detailing from a bank, mm -hmm. but maybe the bank was not looking that good right. and it was not as kinda efficient trashy. or yeah. stuff like that, you know? So when I was doing my electrical work, I noticed that people just throw stuff away here. It's not like in Guatemala. <laughs> in Guatemala, Recycle we're trying, everything and we're trying reuse to get it and everything, yeah, you right. know? So I was looking at how people was throwing everything away. So I did ask, you know, to my, my higher up, you know, if I can have some of the stuff that they was throwing away because I knew it was, it was going to end up in the trash. So while I was working, I was always thinking, how can I use this in a mobile detailing setup? Hmm. Always thinking like that. And so, then... So hold on. So you go from the, your, your, your detailing mm -hmm. and now you're thinking about uh, building, building mobile, mobile units mobile unit. out yeah. better. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So now, okay, continue. Sorry to interrupt you. So that, 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 that's cool. So, okay. I thought I was the inventor of the mobile detailing. <laughs> honestly, we all did. Like, yeah, yeah we, we all, all did. did. Like all Jason did. did. Like yeah, everybody, everybody did. But did. I was 2006 when I was thinking like, if I bring something to the customer house and, and kind of do their car right there, man, wow. this is going to be, oh, this is the newest and thing. And then when I started watching YouTube, it was people that already had like 25 years, you know, right? Yeah. <laughs> doing this. Yeah. But I decide to bring it to, I want to say, you know, in my work, in my mind, you know, bring it to a different level, you know, yep. kind of trying Absolutely. to be efficient, uh, look good when you mm -hmm. are outside of the, the customer house, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. not have so many stuff, you know, around yeah. and all that type of thing. So. Once again, I started doing my setup um, in, I think that was 2000 and I can't remember. But anyways, I started doing my, my setup, you know, and then when I finish, I start crying because I put a lot of effort on that setup. And then I decide I'm going to put it on YouTube. Wow. Then I put it on YouTube. A lot of people start calling me mm -hmm. or comment, doing comments. I start getting subscribers like, when I, when I saw like 100 subscribers, like, the heck? oh, this is coming. Like, but you did some cool things with your unit because talking to you earlier, you were one of the first or earliest to put in some remotes, right? So did that, yeah. did that come from your electrical side? That of, came from the electrical, like it, the remote controls, they already exist. Somebody yep. else invent that thing, but I implemented it into the mobile detailing setups, right. you know? So <clears throat> that is, in, always goes back, you know, to efficiency. Yep. And um, I decided to do that. And then once I showed that in my first YouTube, it was not the first YouTube video. It was maybe like the fifth or so. Uh -huh. uh, and then I showed that and nowadays I'm super happy that everybody, um, a lot of people are using those remote controls oh, yeah. and they are using, I think that company is being successful. Right. right. They don't even know why, but they are. <laughs> it starts out with you. So now at this time, you're building units. You're, you're using your unit to mobile detail, right? Yeah. So you're still working full time. I'm still working full time. And you're detailing on the side, and then you're experimenting with the builds. Yeah. What I was doing is, uh, you know, it, it took a while, you know, for people to kind of reaching out to me as well, you know, and, and kind of ask, you know, mm -hmm. for me to kind of build their setup. But anyways, I was going to my electrical work with my van when I was kind of, you know, ready to, I mean, when I was quitting time, you know, from mm -hmm. my electrical yep. work, I already have an appointment and Go I was right stopping, you know, to the yeah. customer home, kind of doing a detail. I remember one day that I stopped, I don't know if this is good to say it, but I stopped at 11 p.m doing right. a detail at 35 degrees outside. Oh, <laughs> the water tough. was frozen that's on tough. me and it was bad. But anyways, um, I did it and I'm super happy that I did it. That's awesome. Yeah. So now take us, okay, so you're mobile. So now are, are at that point, did you start, did you start profitizing from building other people's systems? 
What happens is that since once they start kind of, I was living in South Carolina on mm -hmm. those days and they, um, they kind of started reaching out to me and they was asking me to build their mobile unit and uh, I didn't know how much to charge or stuff like that right. for building a unit. And I just told them, okay, come over here and just pay my day and I will build the mobile unit mm. for you. Mm. So they come to me like, let's say Friday and Saturday and I can maybe do a setup in two days, like a, something simple but efficient, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, and that's how I start doing it in South Carolina. Um, and with this, I want to thank someone, which is my wife, because mm -hmm. she's been super patient That's with me. That's awesome. Because, you know, putting all these hours of work, electrical, uh, detailing, setups, all that type of things is not easy. No. You know, it's, hard, she, on our, it's hard on our families. Yes, it's hard. Um, and my kids, you know, so. Yeah. Yeah. Well, God bless you for recognizing that. It's, well, I always tell people that, you know, as entrepreneurs, we're kind of, um, we can be a little bit a hole ish you know is because we're so driven that sometimes not intentionally is that we forget the other people in our lives because we're so focused on that one that one goal right yeah. so okay so now you're 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 detailing you're building these rigs what what did you start thinking I, i've got to get into it you know i've got to get into a, a, a location to where i'm fixed where i can detail and build or Take me through that. What was the, the mind okay. thought? Um, I remember the, when we just finished paying our home in, in South Carolina, mm -hmm. we decided to sell the, the, the house, you know, mm -hmm. and move to Richmond, Virginia. Uh, that was, the reason was because uh, my brother-in-law, he was telling me to come to Virginia mm -hmm. and he was in the business of flipping homes, you know, like yeah. that type of thing, yep. you know, but I was always looking, you know, as an entrepreneur, you want to do yeah. different type of things, you know. Um, and then I thought that it was that was going to be a good idea. So <clears throat> I decided to, s we sold the house, we moved to Virginia, and then uh, we went to rent a house, you know. Um, my wife, uh, she, she get into depression mm -hmm. uh, because she was pregnant. Oh. And <laughs> so, but anyways, we, I thought I'd like, you know, I came here, I started doing those houses, mm -hmm. but my brother-in-law, he ended up going to Guatemala. So I, I was like, oops, now what I'm gonna do? Uh, now I don't have a partner and I don't have enough money right. to continue doing those flips, you know, mm -hmm. which I just did one with him, you know, and that mm -hmm. was it. Um, but he have to go and I stay and we decide to kind of, with the same money that we mm -hmm. had, buy another house here and establish in, in Richmond, Virginia. Hmm. Yeah, so. So now it, it, you're, you're, you, you're start, you started over again in a new area. Yes. Okay, so are you doing mobile at that point? I was doing mobile, and but when I moved from South Carolina mm -hmm. to Virginia is when I decided to quit my my electrical work. Wow. Which that was one of the That's most scary decisions. moments. Yeah. Because um, when uh, when I decide to quit, um, well, like this is another story, but I will go over quick. My mom, like like I want to say, like 15 to 16 years ago, she started having some uh, kidney problems, mm -hmm. and Guatemala is super expensive. Mm -hmm. In order to kind of deal with that, right. you know, the medicines, like doing the the dialysis, mm -hmm. all that type of thing. So I was supporting my mom all the time, mm. you know, with that. So mm. it's almost like having two families, right. you know? Yeah. Uh, and I was supporting my, my, my mom with that. And with, I did it for, uh, I believe, like 12 to 13 years. Mm -hmm. And, but when, um, when I decide to, to quit, my mom, she still was alive, you know? So I still was able to support my mom uh, for six months. And then she passed away after. Mm, so yeah, sorry. but that's another another story, you know, the, um, that touched me, you know, pretty hard because, you know, as your mom, I was not able to see her again, you know, for yeah. uh, 18 years, and that was kind wow. of tough for me. Wow. Um, but you know what? Look at the sacrifice that you paid to help her out. You know, I mean, you paid it forward, and it's another thing we got in common. We we didn't meet before today is that I, too, in my, who? My, my wife, you mentioned your wife, my wife allowed 
us to help my mom. And my mom was close to me, so we lived out of state, we moved out of state, but when she got sick, we moved back home to be close to her. We gave up our life that we had and the place we loved, but it's your mom. And we, she got in some trouble, somebody took advantage of her, and uh, she's about ready to lose her house. And here's my lovely wife stepping in and saying, let's bail her out. Yeah. So we took a loan out, you know, to save her house. Awesome. And uh, it wasn't much, but it was the house I grew up in. Yeah. And so we've, we've got a lot of yeah. uh, similar stories. So you take it on your mom, you yeah. know, responsibility. You're married at this time, you moved, you have kids yeah. at this point. Yeah, we had two. Mm. And, and like I say, wow. you know, uh, my when we moved to, to Virginia, we find out that my wife was praying it. Uh, we was renting a house and we did all that stuff until the point, you know, where we decide to buy another house right. because that was part of And the, she's emotional because she's have, you know, she's, it, she's yeah, pregnant, right? Yeah, and exactly. New, a new, new, new part of the, you know, moved and everything else. Yeah, so that's exactly. real challenging. That was, yeah, it was. And you quit your, you don't have a job. And I quit, yeah. Yeah, wow. Okay. Well, I yeah, remember just, she wasn't was stressed at all. Actually, on my Instagram, <laughs> people can find uh, the first day that I went to do a mobile detail wow. job wow. In, wow. In, in Virginia. And I remember I just started throwing some Google ads and my first job, it was an Aston Martin wow. and ceramic coating. I don't even know how I get that call. But the guy called me and I went to do it. I was super happy. It was frozen outside. Really? It was motivating. Like, if you guys want to watch that, it is there. <laughs> so, wow. yeah. And once again, it's like, I want to say two to three years ago um, that, that I, when I did that, and I was just doing that. Um, in this video, it's a, it's a lot of people that I have to thank, honestly. Mm -hmm. uh, start from Phil Miranda, yeah. who's been supporting yeah. me. Um, it's a good guy. Car Supplies Warehouse. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Jason, uh, Eric, yeah. G Technic, yeah, so many people. people. Because, <clears throat> and it's one more person, uh, Julian from Just Clean Details. Mm -hmm. He's a guy that he's been, he's a mobile detailer. Mm -hmm. The where we met, you know, I built his setup, and and mm. we've been, you know, working Friends together. Yes, yeah, that's cool. Yes, so, really good friend of me. So oh. take me. So now, okay, you, you're you're back. You're mobile. You're up here. You're you're established. Your your wife's pregnant. You've got a new home. You quit your job. You're doing what you love. And then, at how long into it you decided that okay. I've got to have somewhere to to build out my units into detail. And you told me a story is you I think you did it the right way because you didn't go out typically what people are looking at is getting into heavy debt, going out and leasing something. You actually I think did it a smart way. So tell us your situation and what what how kind of that process mm -hmm. of getting into a shop but not a typical shop. Okay, I just, before we go to that shop, I just want to say that mobile, the uh, JIT Technic setup, mm -hmm. I built it right under a tree. Under a tree? Under a tree, in like a little tent. Wow. That's where I built that, that setup. Really? Uh, yes, and then and it wasn't a rental house, you know? And then we finally, the wow. reason why I buy that house. Where there's a will, there's a way. <laughs> the, there's reason, a will, there's a way. the reason why I buy that house is because that house has, a, I think it's like a, a thousand square foot shop yep. in the back of the house. Yeah. The house is smaller than the shop. Oh, like really? The house is like, like 900 square feet. <laughs> but it's got a shop. But it's got a shop, right? right? In the back yep. of the house. Yeah. So, and that was the reason why I decided to purchase the house. Right. You know? And it was a house that we bought it with my brother and yeah. my, my brother-in-law in order to flip it. But uh, yeah. he helped me out a lot, you know. And he let me keep the house, and he let me pay him, you know. You know, uh, I just used whatever half of the money that I put on that house, and then he let me pay, wow. you know, after, you know. That's awesome. Yeah. So he he did like a really. He did a good favor, you know. So that's right? cool. So now, you know, today, are you still on the property? You're still, I'm still living there. So you live there, and, and you have the shop in the back. We have the shop in the back. And you all, so, so let me. I'll go back again. Okay. There's a lot of similarities. <laughs> okay. My current shop is on the back of my property. Okay. okay. Uh, we bought it almost four years ago. We had two mortgages out. My mom's house was still a little tiny mortgage. Okay. And then another mortgage in our house. This house became available and I'm like, okay, how the hell are we going to get this house? Because I go around the corner where the first, where there's a snowstorm that came in. Nobody can get up to see this house. It's got a 5,000 square foot shop. 
almost new. I mean, it's used, but it was in good shape. Mm -hmm. House is, is not, it's 1,700 square feet. Okay. Nothing special. Mm -hmm. Great house, but I, I we drove down the street. I saw the shop, and I told my wife. I looked at her, and I said, sold. We're buying it right now. Mm -hmm. We're going to make an offer. And she's like, we haven't even looked at the house. I said, we don't need to. We need the shop. <laughs> and I said, who cares? Do you know? And yeah. to this day, we have the, we, it's, it's, it's just, it's a perfect store. But here's, there's a trend, you know, is I worked in, in, in 2007. Our daughter was going to start kindergarten. I decided to work out of my home shop in Idaho okay. for one year. Now, we had two other shops, right, at this mm -hmm. time. But I worked out of my home shop, like you do to be closer to my daughter, my, our youngest one before she went to school full time, okay. right? That's one of the best decisions I ever made. Here's the shame. People think that because you work out of your home, it, that you're not, you're not as professional. I beg to differ. I think you're more professional because you're keeping your expenses. And in this case, you own the house. Yes. You're not giving away money every month to a lease mm -hmm. that's never going to come back to you. Okay. You're still doing the work that everybody else would, yes. but instead you're investing that into your property. Correct. So yes. that's brilliant. So take us through some, what were some of the challenges? So you're mobile, all of a sudden you got this place, you're moving in, you're building trade, building under a tree. Now you got the little house, you got a nice little shop. Take us through that. Well, the, the straws is money, you know, like mm. you, you got to start, you know, uh, kind of, I mean, you got to put a lot of work into that. Uh, but, you know, I was able to kind of, um, when we moved to the house is mm -hmm. when my mom passed away. Okay. Like, okay. You want to hear something funny? Okay. We just keeps happening. When we moved into our house now, my mom passed away. Oh. Just yes. months later. We, we, were, we got yeah, the house see? and remodeled mm -hmm. to have her move in with us mm -hmm. and she was put on hospice. So how much of this is tied in? This is meant to be right now. <laughs> I mean, isn't it? I mean, yeah. we're a whole different yes. generation. Yes. So take us through. Wow, a lot of emotions. That's why you're a super cool dude. Oh, thank you. No, know. it is because you're you're telling your story now and you're being honest with it. And this is raw. This is anybody that thinks this isn't interesting. There's gonna be one person you're gonna change your life today. <laughs> Somebody watching this yeah. might be a year from now, might be right now when you publish this, or it might be ten years. You're gonna try to change your life because they have a similar situation. Yeah. Because when that all happened, you you know your mom's. Your mom's past, you know, you lost her, right? Yeah. So that's emotional time. Yeah. So going through that alone, but the money side of it, right? It just the never money. ends. Yeah. You know, you need it. You got to keep pushing. You got to keep, uh, you know, uh, paying for advertising, all that type of stuff when maybe you don't have enough, you know? Right. Uh, but, you know, things went good, you know, uh, by putting quality of work, you know, customer service, all that type of stuff, you know. I want to, like, you know, I, I want to thank to all my, my clients, you know, yeah. because they are amazing. Well, honestly. I think they think you're pretty amazing because you're a pretty <laughs> cool guy. So, it, you know, you just said something. How, just, it, it, it's so easy to be nice. It, you have to work at being a jerk. And mm -hmm. I think you see the value in your customers. And that's why the customers see the value in you. Mm -hmm. So now take us to right now. What goes on in your shop? What's, what's your day like? Okay, so now uh, we are at the shop. Uh, I started, like, I like to invest, mm -hmm. you know, because I think if you keep the money, you know, whatever you are making, you know, you got to kind of use the money to survive, but at mm -hmm. the same time, you got to put it back into the business somehow Absolutely. in order to kind of build. It's not like, you know, um, all the money that I make on the detailing is, is there, you know, I, I kind of, from my electrical work, you know, stuff that I purchased in and before, you know, yeah. uh, I end up selling that stuff in order to invest in the detailing Absolutely. because it's what is kind of yeah. bringing the food, you know, to my table. So <clears throat> now we have the shop. Uh, we bring um, ceramic coatings into the shop. We bring people that they want to be. Um, they want me to train them, you know, mm -hmm. to do corrections, mm -hmm. uh, coatings, uh, stuff like that and we build the mobile units in the specific shop as well. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. And what, so what's your what's your proudest moment? Okay. If you had to give one up, would you give up detailing or building the mobile units? Oh, that's our question, <laughs> huh? What do you like better? I can detail all day long. Just therapy. Yes, it's therapy for yeah. you. Because this is where everything starts. And then there are part of you because we built we built mobile units for a while and uh, sold that section of the business. 
it was really rewarding to build a mobile unit that you knew somebody was going to go out and chase their dreams with it. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes. So that was really rewarding it, too. Like if we, if I have to pick it, like it's difficult because I really don't want to. Either one. Of them. You can do both. That's good news. Okay. I just had to throw you in. You don't no, have to like, give one up. You don't have to yeah, give one up. I, I just you know what both. I'm doing. Like in the uh, the trainings as well. Now I, I love them uh, I love because. Training. Uh, I feel like I'm helping someone Amen. out there, you know. Um, it's not for the money because I can make a lot more money doing a ceramic coating Amen. than putting yeah. my day, you know, for yeah, a training. Yep. And I can, having a shop, I can have employees, I can let them do right. the coatings, you know. So right. I'd rather spend like a full day with a student, you know, and mm -hmm. teach them what I know. That's it. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's so fun. So now, piece of advice. People that are looking, a lot of people want to get into a shop. Understandable because of weather. It's easier set up. Customers can be you. But there is a there's the money side of it. Yeah. You know, there's a money side. So what 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 advice would you give those looking to go from mobile into a shop? From mobile to a shop, I just can't tell from my experience. Mm -hmm. Like if you guys want to start uh, your shop, you know, you can kind of start doing it that way, you know, having a shop in your home. It's many detailers that are doing it like that. That's you know? Our very own Sydney does it, and she's real successful at yeah. it. It's a great Filming lifestyle. On the... Yeah, it's a great lifestyle business. Yes. It's, it's There's less headaches. I, I've enjoyed, I mean, my shop is, like I said, it's 45 seconds outside my back door, yeah. and I'm in heaven. I'll go out there some nights and just test products or, you know, mess around in the shop because mm -hmm. it's... It's kind of my sanctuary, yeah. right? Yeah, it's, Isn't that it's nice. nice. It's, it's really nice. So now the other thing is like I know by having a physical shop, like uh, you know, on a, maybe a place you know that you, where mm -hmm. you are renting or you purchase like a nice shop or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, uh, it looks more professional, you know, Absolutely. at some at some point, you know, or because maybe it's once in a while you might gonna get that type of customer that they don't wanna bring their car to your house, mm -hmm. you know, or stuff like that. I mean, it's a good way to do it, but at the same time, it's a lot of more uh, overhead, right? You know, where you have to be paying a lot of for rent, yep. all that type of things. Uh, but I do recommend, you know, someone to start like that in the back of their house, and then if they see that the business is growing then move it there you go you know there you move go. it to a, a location like that well we always tell people if you're going to move in a shop the simple math is and a lot of people don't like hearing this is you've got to have at minimal six months of total expenses in the bank that includes your business expense and your personal expense but you're better off that's minimal and you still could get in trouble you should have a year's worth yeah. because things are going to pop up that are gonna cost you money and you better have a little nest egg set aside. And a lot of people, that's where they get in trouble or they get too much shop, they get too big of a shop, they just don't need. Exactly. And then the other thing is, you know, we're seeing the trend now of more and more people owning their shops. And listen, that's your future, especially if you're at any age, I don't care if you're, how old are you? How old are you? <laughs> I'm 26. Okay, so I don't care if you're in your 30s or in your 50s, I'm 20 years older than you. Is it, it doesn't matter is that real estate's an investment. And so you got to look at things that is it going to be is it is it going to be an asset or is it a liability mm -hmm. and when you own something in most cases it's going to be an asset and mm -hmm. this is something a lot of detailing companies are really hard to sell right but if you've got the property and the land that's not hard to sell you're yeah. going to own that and that mm -hmm. could be income for the rest of your life correct and yeah. so i dig that um, so any any other advice before we, we, we jet out of here? Is... Advice, um, like if you don't have the money to invest it, you know, just do. Keep start, working. Keep working, yeah, you know, until working. you make it. Um, and, you know, because this is the other thing. I get so many different type of clients mm -hmm. on when it comes to the detailing, mm -hmm. you know, the detailing rigs, you know. Mm -hmm. I have people that are just retired, doing the retired, yeah, you know, yeah. they got money to invest yeah. and they want to kind of just put their money, invest their money and have the setup that they want. They don't want to, they want to put money into marketing. Yeah. That's another thing, you right. know, that if you don't have money to do marketing, why will you get a, like a big setup or something like that? You know, you have to put marketing 
your setup yeah. or your shop, whatever it is going to be, you know. And then I now I have the type of clients that they are just quitting. I mean, they are just uh, taking off, you know, from high school. Yeah. And they want to start their detailing business. Mm -hmm. So that's another type of clients that I like to help. Sometimes they come to me and they say, Tony, can you help me to build a like efficient setup, but at a low price? Yeah. So affordable. that's when I kind of, yeah, affordable. So I try to right. help them as well, you know, right. in order for them to get out there, you know, and start and, and making a, money. And a lot of people, what they haven't learned too, and you did through your career in the logical side, is they people need to learn to sell, sell themselves, sell services, be comfortable. Yeah. That's is that, thing. you know, I spent I spent years honing in my sales through retail, you know, showing, selling ladies' shoes. <laughs> so ladies' shoes, yeah, sell ladies' shoes. You want to take and learn something about, about selling, sell, sell ladies' shoes. Anything to sell, if you, you can become a really good salesperson in a pretty short time, a year or so, maybe mm -hmm. two, maybe three. But learning to sell, because you're constantly going to be selling your your services mm -hmm. and yourself. Mm -hmm. and, and that's a big part of it. Exactly. And, and so. Yeah, because it, in that one, they're like, I don't consider myself uh, like a good sales person. Mm -hmm. But this is the other thing as well, that if you just put passion on whatever you do and you show it yep. to someone. Amen. like. In my case, I show everything yep. in my social media, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, all right. those platforms. The, those platforms help a lot, you know, right. in order to show if you are like a person that has like a broken English like me, yeah. just show what you are doing. Dude, I was, I was born here and I got broken English, so you're doing good. Oh, thank you. <laughs> you're doing good. You're doing good. Thank you. So, so no, I think that you you know it, it's 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 I think you're dead right, and I think that you know you do you, when and when I say learn to sell, yeah, is it really what it's saying is is learn to connect, learn Correct. to build relationships. Yeah. Yes. It's not. I hate. I hate. I never. Even when I sold ladies' shoes as a teenager, I didn't. I was a hit. I didn't sell the most shoes in the department. I had the best reviews okay. the reason why is i didn't worry about i didn't worry I, I wasn't there for that purpose i was having fun i was a teenager pretty girls would come in uh it was air conditioned you know okay um and 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 i didn't grow up in that area so to be kind of on the snooty side of things and see how the other side that was important too is to see how other people lived and mm -hmm. i came into their world and it really taught me a lot of yeah. just being there so amazing well i'll tell you you got to be proud of yourself thank and you. i'm sure if your mom is here right now she'd be very proud of you thank you and uh just keep hitting it and uh, i'm honored i conducted an interview on him because i think when i met you is you're a dynamic person in a very thank modest you. way and so uh, i'm i'm excited to watch your career the next 20 years and see, thank you so much. see where you're at when you're my age and and come uh, cheer you on. All so right. what to uh, finish it out. Yeah. Well, so guys, there you, there you guys have it. Mr. Rennie's story, my story uh, as well, which I never talk about these, you know, on my channel, especially on my channel, <laughs> you know. Uh, but yeah, there you guys have it. Uh, that's a little bit of us. And it's cool. Yeah. A lot of similarities. Yeah. And different really, countries came from different environments and different age group, but look at the commonality we've got. I think a lot of detailers, a lot of automotive entrepreneurs have what we, you know, have what we have, and that's why yeah. we uh, we are loyal. And yeah. so uh, I think it's pretty awesome to be around you, Mr. Rennie. Thank you, my thank friend. Thank you so much. Thank you. I really appreciate, appreciate you. It. Yep. Guys, like, share, subscribe, and I will catch you guys on the next one.